This time on Ozark Garage, we're going to straighten and trust the rear Dana 44 axle in the Truggy. Welcome to Ozark Garage. Follow along as I fabricate, modify, restore, and drive interesting projects. Stick around, see what's next. All right, welcome back. Today we're working on the Truggy, and we're going to tackle something that's been bothering me for a couple of years, and that is the rear axle leaking. And we're not talking about a simple leak like a differential cover or a pinion seal or anything like that. Uh, what's happening here is the axle housing is actually coming loose from the side tubes. And if you look carefully in these holes, um, you can see that the gear oil is actually leaking out and weeping out in between the tube and the cast center section. And that's because this is a single-sided three-link, and so all the torque of the axle is controlled only on one side, and specifically this tube here. So as the pinion gets torqued on by the engine and drivetrain, it tries to pivot up and that has to be resisted by how it's attached to the tube. I anticipated this to a degree because I fully welded the axle housing to the tubes when I assembled this, but these plug welds, which are the factory means of attaching this, have still broken loose and now um, it's leaking out. And then to keep that from happening again, uh, we're going to have to trust the axle, which is something I probably should have done the first time, but I didn't. Got it drained, and now it's time to finish pulling the axle, get it up on the bench so we can get to work. Alright, so we got the axle pulled out of the truggy and up here on the workbench. Right now I'm just cleaning out these old plug welds here, trying to burn out all the oil and clean out all the paint and everything like that so I can die grind those out and re-weld them. Plug the old breather hole here, cleaning up the top of the axle, getting ready for the truss that's coming later, but first we got a lot of uh, oil and paint to clean out of these plug welds. Okay, so here's the truss that I designed. It basically turns the axle housing into an I-beam. Should strengthen it up quite a bit, and uh, one thing I did find, a little gap here. It's not an optical illusion. I've measured this axle housing every way I know how, and it is indeed bent. It's bent about an eighth of an inch in this spot here. It's about an eighth inch low, so the sides of the axle housing are up higher. So before I weld this in and weld these uh, plug welds back, factory plug welds. I'm going to try to straighten this out. I think I got a solution here. I can chain it to the table and use a bottle jack. Once I get the axle straightened to where I like it, I'm going to weld these plug welds first and then I'll finish fitting up the uh, truss and get that tacked into place and weld it in place and we'll be good to go. Got the truss welded in, took a little bit of time, pretty tedious, welding a spot, waiting for it to cool, move into another spot, welding it in, waiting for it to cool, come back. Now I need to take out the bottle jack, take off the chains, flip the axle over so I can weld the plug welds down here on the bottom. The center section of the axle is cast and the tubes are drawn, so they expand and contract at different rates. Anytime you're welding a center section like this to tubes and vice versa, it's really important to pre and post heat it. I found the diesel powered salamander here works just fine for preheating and then for postheating you just gradually move it farther and farther away. This cools everything down much more slowly and prevents cracking of the welds. Okay so we got our axle tube sealed to the center section housing here with some ultra black flexible silicone so hopefully we have no more leaks for the foreseeable future. And now it's time to move on to other things. So. We need to relocate our differential breather here. I like these bellows style because you don't have to worry about hoses going anywhere, things like that. So we just need to drill and tap an eighth inch NPT. And then we need to relocate our brake lines here and plumb those on the front side of the axle housing. Let's get to it.
If you're curious about how I connected a Suzuki drive shaft to the Dana 44, the secret is this Toyota flange. These Toyota flanges are commonly available to connect a Toyota drive shaft to a Dana 44. And Toyota and Suzuki use a lot of the same bolt patterns. The difference is the centering ring on a Suzuki drive shaft is much smaller. So I use the welder to add material to the centering ring and then use the lathe to clean it up. After reinstalling the drive shaft and the shocks, I turned my attention to finishing up a few other loose ends. I modified and reinstalled the power tank mount and then focused on making the truggy run again. If you've been following along, you know I relocated the fuel tank, so I had to extend wires to the fuel pump, run new fuel lines, and mount the fuel filter. I also had to shorten some wires for the tail lights. And, as promised, the truggy runs again. But, as always, just when you think you run out of things to fix, Well, that's not good. Let's see what that's all about. Next time we're going to crack open an A or B air locker and fix it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time.